Hey, what's going on, guys? Uh, today I got a game of Team Deathmatch on Fuel, and I know that the map pack was released a long time ago, but this is actually the first gameplay on Fuel I've gotten to upload to my channel. Uh, so I'm going to talk about some stuff that is kind of old news, but I, I guess better late than never. Um, I'm going to be using the TAR-21 Silenced with Scavenger, Stopping Power, and Ninja Pro. I know it's a pretty um, original setup. I know, guys. You don't need to tell me. Uh, but, but in all seriousness, I was really trying to get a good game, so I guess that's why I'm using the... Uh, the unoriginal setup, um, but it's still a good setup. It's a pretty solid uh, kill streak setup. Scavenger being um, you expecting to have a long life. Stopping power is obviously going to help on every single gun except for the WA-2000, which you guys um, so meanly pointed out to me the last time I said that stopping power is the best perk in the game. Uh, and Ninja Pro, uh, obviously meaning that you are using a headset, or maybe you're not using a headset, but you just understand that other people are using headsets and they could hear you if you don't use it. Um, but enough about that. Uh, I'm not going to be talking about the gameplay too much today because this is a really long video and there's not much to be said. Um, my overall consensus on fuel, in case any of you guys care. Uh, who am I kidding? None of you guys care. But my consensus on fuel is that it's a decent map, change of scenery. I kind of like it. I really don't like the fact that they just added on this huge... Um, as somebody, as another commentator said, the map looks like a uh, bicep with a fucking tumor on it. Like, I swear, that tumor gets me so mad. I just changed the entire mood of this commentary. As soon as I just started thinking about it, I got so mad. Because you know that whole rocky area with all those rocks? Yeah, you know, you guys know the rocks. The rocks that everybody glitches in so that they can, like, stand in rocks and wait for people to run out there and shoot them in the back. Yeah, I had two of these guys in this game, and you guys will see. Look at the mini-map. You see where, like, all five of my teammates are? They're all over there by the rocks. They're trying to be all cool and glitching them and stuff. I don't know. It, it really made me mad. Like, this gameplay lasted so long, and Fuel, fuel is a really, really um, uh, boring map, I guess, for the most part. But, it, oh God, it's, it's emphasized by, like, ten when you have two teammates sitting in rocks the whole game. Uh, but enough about that. I'm sorry for the rain. I really am, guys. It's not what my channel is supposed to be about. Uh, but I'm not going to restart the commentary because that would just uh, take more time. Uh, so anyway, I wanted to talk about uh, something kind of odd. Nobody really talks about this. Uh, but gamers or what a gamer is and my gaming history. So I guess um, I think that most people would consider me a gamer. I think that most of you guys consider me a gamer. I know my dad considers me a gamer. He... Um, He's kind of like, well, my dad, uh, if I'm ever into a phase, because I usually go through phases, the first thing he will bring up about me, if, uh, you know, something comes up about his son in a conversation, uh, he will say, uh, you know, whatever phase I'm into. So, like, now, the first thing he brings up to anybody is that I'm a gamer. Uh, he, when I got into this phase where I was, like, buying a lot of shoes that I really liked, I was really into, like, shoes. Not, I wasn't collecting, like, you know, signed shoes or anything like that, but I was really into, uh, skating shoes. He, he would tell people that that's, you know, what I was doing at the time. Uh, but I guess that's neither here nor there, and you guys don't care about it anyway. So, moving on. Um, so, my, my perception of what a gamer is has changed since I've started doing this YouTube thing, and I've, uh, met people, like, on YouTube, like, Muzza Fuzza and Hutch and... I guess all these people who have these really um, deep gaming backgrounds, like they all have played, you know, I always hear about it, GoldenEye, uh, or James Bond, GoldenEye, which was apparently like the greatest game ever. Um, all these people know about Marvel vs. Capcom, which until last night, I, did, I had no idea what that game was about. Uh, thanks to Krunk Skunk for actually describing that to me. Um, who, what else? Like, all, all these old games that the, these guys uh, talk about in a nostalgic way, um, about how much fun they had on them. I have no idea what any of these are about, and I never got to play them. I really am not, I don't know, I don't consider myself a gamer necessarily. Um, so, what I thought I'd do is I will present to you guys, the viewers, my entire gaming history, and you guys can tell me whether or not you think I'm a gamer. Um, and, and, Keep in mind that the reason I'm even doing this commentary is because I don't think that the amount of hours that you put into a game would make you a gamer. I think it's the, um, I guess the knowledge of the gaming industry that would make you a gamer. Um, or, you know, how um, deep your knowledge is of the gaming 
industry. So anyway, let's uh, get going. Um, so I made a little list here on my computer about uh, all the games that I've played. It's not too long, so don't worry. Um, but the first game I ever had was a, I got a Game Boy and I got Pokemon Silver. And Pokemon Silver, I, I don't know about you guys, but Pokemon Silver was a shit in fourth grade. Like if you didn't have Pokemon Silver, you weren't cool. It doesn't matter if you had Pokemon Gold, Pokemon Platinum, you weren't cool unless you had Pokemon Silver. Um, that's not true at all, but Pokemon Silver, I thought it was the best. I really love that game. I probably have like a couple days played on that game if it were if it were counted up. I don't know, um, but I really like that. And one of my earliest childhood memories is actually uh, on the playground in fourth grade at my old private school. Um, I was on the playground playing Pokemon Silver with a group of friends, and we were just all like uh, talking about you know uh, you know which was our favorite Pokemon. By the way, mine is Lugia. Uh, Lugia was uh, to awesome sauce, um, but we were talking about our favorite Pokemon, and I remember looking over, and this is not what I said, and this wasn't what I said in my head, but if it was translated into the words of a 16-year-old, and I know it's pretty awesome, I'm 16 now, um, was I saw these people on the opposite side of the playground with Yu-Gi-Oh, and they were playing Yu-Gi-Oh cards, and what I thought to myself was, what a bunch of nerds. Like, honestly, that is that was a thought process that I had about anybody who was playing a card game. I don't know. I never got into the, the card aspect of Pokemon or the show aspect of Pokemon, but Pokemon Silver was the awesome. Um, anyway, the next game that I got was actually a game I don't remember the name of. I had gotten a GameCube, and I got this game with a purple dragon, and you just walked around and you collected stuff, and... It had a purple dragon, and I think that was about 2004. And I'm sure somebody will leave a comment saying like they know the name of it. I think it was like a one-word name, and I think it started with either an S or a Z. I could be completely wrong, but purple dragon game was the second game I ever played. Third game I ever played was also for the GameCube. Uh, that was James Bond 007 Nightfire. And, wow, I, I that's probably the game I have the most uh, memories on. Um, definitely a lot of fun times to, to be had. Uh, playing some uh, four-man split screen uh, with people in the neighborhood and the thing that I really liked about that game is you could set up like these bots kind of like these like AI characters that you could play against so you could play with like four of your friends against these four like uh, computer basically computer people that would shoot at you and you could shoot them and it, was, it wasn't always easy I'll tell you that much um at least not for at least not for somebody my age at the time. Uh, the next game that I got really into was SSX3, which was a snowboarding game. And I got to tell you guys, that was the first game that I played that had a soundtrack, and probably one of the only games I played that had a soundtrack. And that those every single song in that soundtrack is ingrained in my head. I couldn't tell you the titles of the songs or who sung them, but I could tell you all the lyrics. I mean, it is crazy. Uh, I heard I heard one of them on the radio the other day, and it was a uh, Pretty nostalgic feeling. Um, so the commentary is coming towards the end. I gotta, I gotta hurry this up. The next game I played was Guitar Hero 3. Got really into that. Uh, my only gaming experience ever on the PC was for like two weeks. I played this game on mini clips called Heli Attack 3, and I was pretty much a shut in for two weeks in seventh grade. And I don't know. I, I just love that game. Um, I got an Xbox and I played a little bit of Call of Duty 2. Didn't get really into that. Played a little bit of Halo 3. Didn't get really into that. And then I got Modern Warfare 1. And Modern Warfare 1, uh, from that point on, uh, I guess you could say that I was a gamer, or I don't know, I kind of thought I was a gamer, like I said, until I met all these people on YouTube, and I probably put a good, I, I want to say 80 days uh, playing that game for, you know, private matches for Game Battles and Major League Gaming. Uh, then I have Modern Warfare 2, which, uh, and, and by the way, that 80 days is over a full two years, like November 2007 to November 2009, um, so... I guess future uh, games I'm going to get, uh, Halo Reach and Black Ops. So that's about it, guys. Um, so please tell me whether or not you think I'm a gamer. I don't know. Um, that's about it. I'll see you guys later. Bye.